In this video, we want to look at an application of vectors in three dimensions. A plane is flying horizontally due north in calm air at 300 miles per hour when it encounters a horizontal crosswind blowing southeast at 40 miles per hour and a downdraft blowing vertically downward at 30 miles per hour. What are the resulting speed and direction of the plane relative to the ground? All right, well, let's first start off here and just look at this in two dimensions. So in two dimensions, when we were doing applications, we'd set up something like this, and we'd think of this y and x axis, north, south, east, and west. Now, what do we know? Well, we know that our plane is flying due north in calm air at 300 miles per hour. Now, this horizontally part is just telling you that it's not gaining or losing altitude. Okay, so whatever its altitude is, we're going to consider that our um, what's happening here in our two-dimensional drawing. And then we'll go to three dimensions. So our plane is headed due north. So for that vector, we're going to go up like this. Right? And the components of this vector in two dimensions would be the x component would be 0, and the y component would be 300. Now, like I said, in a second, we're going to go to three dimensions. And so we're going to add that third dimension on, which would just be 0. So I'll just, we'll just leave it like that for right now. All right, so now what's going to happen? Well, the first thing we've got is a horizontal crosswind blowing southeast at 40 miles per hour. So this horizontal crosswind is just telling you that that crosswind is not blowing it down or up it's on the same horizon that the plane is flying, at the same altitude the plane is flying. So it's blowing southeast. Let's do this in red. Let's see, southeast. So this way. Okay, and this isn't drawn to scale, all right? But I'm, I'll make it smaller than the 300, but I, I want to make it big enough so we can see it. So what we know is we know that the magnitude of this vector is 40, but we don't know the components yet. So we want to find the components of this vector in two dimensions at least, and then we'll move to three dimensions. All right, well, a little trigonometry would tell us that the x component of this vector, we know this is a 45 degree angle right here, this theta, because it's southeast, because it says southeast, we can assume that it means directly between south and east. So I know the um, cosine of 45 degrees is my theta value, is going to be my x component over 40. And some of you might know special triangles, and you can use those as well. Multiply both sides by 40, and we get 20 square root 2 is x. Well, since this is going to be a 45-45 triangle, and the sine of 45, if you want to do it, that's fine. It's going to be the same number for your y value. It won't always be the case, right? Sometimes they'll give you a different angle. Now, since that's blowing south, I'm going to represent that as negative, just you know, because of my axis here. I'm using my axis system. All right, so far so good. Well, now what do we got? Third thing we've got going on here is we've got a down draft blowing vertically downward at 30 miles per hour. So this is where the 3D comes into play. So I'm going to go over to GeoGebra, and we're going to look at this in, in three dimensions. So this plane that's highlighted in gray is basically the horizontal plane, whatever uh, altitude the, the airplane is flying at. All right, and so we have, let's move this around. This is in 3D right now. The X is coming towards us. The Y is moving to the left. Z is going up. I'm going to move this so it just looks like it's in two dimensions, okay? So that looks pretty good, all right? So here's our x-axis and our y-axis, and we're looking straight down on the z-axis so we can't see it. And this is the picture we had when we were in two dimensions. Plane flying north, wind blowing this way, right? Now we're going to throw the downdraft in. So if I look at it this way, here's the downdraft under here. This vector is just headed straight down at 30 miles per hour. So we have the plane 
the crosswind, the horizontal crosswind, and then the downdraft. And we want to put these pieces of information together. So let's start representing these now in three dimensions. Okay, so our plane we could write as the vector 0, 300, 0. And our horizontal crosswind, call it C, we can represent that with these components. Now we'll just throw on the zero. And then our downdraft, call that vector D. Well, that's just going zero, zero. It's not moving in the x and y direction. It's just going straight down with a z component of 30. Okay? So now if we want to find the actual direction and speed of this plane, it's going to be the sum of all these vectors. Now I want to get a little picture of that. I mean, doing the sum is pretty easy. We're just going to add up all the components. Okay? Um, that's not going to be hard. We're just going to do P plus C plus D and we're going to add up these components. So let's just do the easy part first. So if I add up all these components, I get my x components, I get 20 root 2. My y components, I get 300 minus 20 root 2. And my z component, I get negative 30. So that's the vector that represents the actual path of the plane after it's affected by these two vectors. Well, let's get a picture of what this would look like, OK? Let's first look at the two-dimensional situation. So if I take this crosswind vector here and I move it up here parallel to the original one but not in standard position, then I know that the resulting vector before the downdraft is this guy right here, right? So that's before the downdraft. That's the plane plus the crosswind. So basically now if we just took this green vector and then we went down 30 units, that's going to give us our three-dimensional vector. So the green vector is basically these two guys right here. Right? And then to put it in 3D, we just add that Z component. So in GeoGebra, I think I have this vector here with those two together. So there's the that light purple vector is the plane affected by the crosswind but not the downdraft. See the light purple vector still lying in the horizontal plane that I'm using the word plane in two different ways here that the airplane was flying in. All right now if we throw in the negative 30 now we get this one under here is the actual flight of the plane. So let's look at it let's see if I can get a good view. That's a pretty good view right there. So the plane was flying due north, the crosswind came and pushed it back this way, and the downdraft pushed it that way. And the components of this vector under here, which is the actual flight of the plane, are 28.28, 271.72, and negative 30. And those components should be what we get if we punch these values into our calculator right here. Okay. So now, how do we find the actual speed of the plane? Well, that is the magnitude of this vector. Let's call this vector, I don't know, we'll call it vector A. This is not the greatest notation. Kind of like to use lowercase v for velocity. How's that? We'll call this the actual velocity of the plane. So if I want to know the actual speed of the plane, I need to find the magnitude of this vector. Which is just going to be some computation. We have the components, so we can just square each one. And I'll leave it to you to punch this into your calculator. But I will tell you that it should come out to be, let's see, what did I get? Approximately 275 miles per hour. Now you always want to ask yourself, does that make sense? Well, we it was going 300 miles per hour. The downdraft isn't really going to slow it down. It's going to push it down. But this crosswind blowing into its face a little bit is going to slow it down. So it should be a little bit less than 300 miles per hour. So I think this makes good sense for this one. 
Now the remainder of the problem asks us to find the direction of the plane, and that's just a little bit of a preview of coming attractions. We're going to learn how to find the direction and express these angles um, in a different lesson. All right, so I hope you found this application of three-dimensional vectors interesting, and I encourage you to go to GeoGebra and try to put these vectors in and mess around. The notation's a little weird putting this stuff in, but uh, give it a try. When you're typing out these vectors, um, the way, here, let me delete this one and do it again, vector r. So I had the point r up here, which I located by adding all the components together. And so if I highlight the point r, that's the point here. So that's the terminal point of the vector that I wanted. So then when I wanted to show the whole vector, just come down here and I type vector. And it gives me this notation help. I don't find it helps a lot. And I just do R, close parentheses, and hit enter. And then it names it and draws the vector. So it's kind of fun to work with vectors in three dimensions using GeoGebra.